Imagine you've got a tennis ball attached to a piece of string and you start swinging it in circles. Whoa now, watch out for your buddy. Let's take a closer look at the fascinating physics of this simple action. You've probably heard of Newton's second law of motion as it relates to objects moving in a straight line. Turns out, Newton's second law also tells us about the net force on an object as it moves in a circle. When an object moves in a circle, its velocity changes direction. Since the velocity is changing, that means we have an acceleration. And we know from Newton's second law that if we have an acceleration, we have a net force. Now back to our spinning ball. For objects undergoing circular motion, the net force on the object is called the centripetal force. It's a weird sounding word, but it's Latin for the phrase center seeking. It's named centripetal because the centripetal force always points to the center of the circle. The ball has a tangential velocity, so if you suddenly cut the string, it would fly off in whatever the tangential direction was at the moment you made the cut. But assuming you don't cut the string and you keep swinging the ball, the ball's tangential velocity is constantly changing directions. This means the ball is accelerating, and the reason it's accelerating is due to the centripetal force. The centripetal force acting on the ball is constantly directing the ball towards the center of the circle, your hand. This, combined with the ball's velocity, keeps the ball swinging in a circle. The same centripetal force that keeps the tennis ball swinging in a circle also keeps roller coasters on the track as they go through a loop-de-loop. -loop. So the next time you're having a blast on a roller coaster, you can thank the centripetal force.